welcome members to the 12th meeting in 2016 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. And as always, ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed the committee takes item four in private. This will enable the committee to consider a draft of its third quarterly report for the parliamentary year 2015-2016. Is the committee agreed to take item four in private, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two is the Burial and Cremation Scotland Bill. This item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers provisions in the bill following stage two. After stage two, there are a number of new and substantially revised delegated powers in the bill. The majority of the changes reflect the committee's comments at stage one, and the committee may wish to welcome these changes. Section 66 contains a revised power allowing Scottish ministers to make regulations for or in connection with the licensing scheme for funeral directors' businesses. The revised power takes on board the committee's comments at stage one by clarifying that the scheme will apply to the funeral directors' businesses rather than their premises. At stage one, the committee also considered that licensing schemes ought, as a matter of principle, to be set out in primary legislation rather than delegated entirely to regulations. This is unchanged after stage two. Such a licensing scheme could significantly impact on funeral directors. However, it is not possible to assess the impact at present as the bill delegates the making of regulations about the licensing scheme to subordinate legislation. Does the committee agree that the matters relating to the licensing of funeral directors' businesses should be set out more fully on the face of the bill, given their significance? Stuart. Um, clearly, uh, one of the very important things that's uh, in this bill is on the, the, the back of the ashes uh, from babies and others. Uh, and, and if we're going to tackle this sensitive issue and the whole issue of burials and cremations is sensitive, uh, then I think we need to have the maximum parliamentary consideration. So I think uh, the government should certainly be asked to do a wee bit more. Uh, but in any event, I think it's important that we put on the record uh, that uh, the development of a licensing scheme needs to have the fullest possible parliamentary scrutiny by whatever means it is achieved. John. Yes, um, in agreement with that, I mean, it, it, it's very encouraging that uh, there have actually been quite a lot of amendments to uh, this bill and um, taking on board some of the other concerns we had. But this seems to be the main area where we had concerns and there have not been amendments made. Um, I mean, ideally, I would like to see uh, everything on the face of the bill or as much as possible on the face of the bill. I, I think given the time scales that are happening, that may be difficult, but uh, that would certainly be my desire. John. Um, thank you, uh, convener. Um, I would concur with my colleagues in, in what they have said. Uh, I too would like to see um, as much primary red, uh, as much uh, primary legislation on the face of the bill as possible. I don't want to see regulations um, where they can be avoided, um, and so I very much welcome the the effort the government has made in in putting. Um, stuff on the face of the bill. Um, I'm at a loss for words this morning. <laughs> I can leave it at that. Lizzie. Uh, thank you. I, th I think we ought to, it's, it's important um, that the, the government is change is welcomed from being the funeral director's premises to the business. That is a welcome change. Um, uh, but I think actually with respect to the, the power, I think we I think a, a hands form of affirmative procedure, I would be more comfortable with that. I, I get the impression that colleagues are, are, are with me that we need to encourage the government to set down as much on the bill as it can, recognising the timetables we are now very obviously operating on that may be unrealistic. I'm wondering whether we should encourage them to see an enhanced form of procedure as being appropriate for the regulations when they come forward, given that they are going to be close to the kind of things we would like to see on the statute anyway, and that has, by definition, an enhanced form of consultation. So I'm wondering, I'm, I, clearly I could write to the government, but even at this late stage, I'm not sure that's terribly helpful, but maybe I should do so. Uh, I'm just wondering whether we might bring forward an amendment uh, which sets out an enhanced form of, of procedure for the regulations um, 
in such a way that there's one there to be debated at the very least, uh, rather than run the risk of being, as it were, timed out. Stuart? Um, I think by whatever means can, it can be achieved, it would be useful for there to be an amendment uh, before Parliament at Stage 3, whether brought forward by the Government or indeed uh, by you in the name of this committee, so that the matters that uh, are giving us concern can be addressed. The Minister, if the Minister recommends uh, to Parliament the amendment not be adopted, then that's the position Parliament takes. At least it would create the opportunity for the record to carry a very clear statement of intent of what the Government planned to do uh, in this area. And I think, I think having an amendment uh, from whatever source would be helpful in achieving that. John? Yes, I mean, I, I, we are, we're very tight for time, but I would be inclined to write, first of all, to the Government and uh, encourage them to lodge an amendment. Uh, however, I suppose the reality is we have already suggested that and they have lodged other amendments and haven't lodged this one, so I suppose I'm not wildly optimistic. Um, but I would do that first anyway and then be ready. we should be ready to follow that up with an amendment uh, if we think nothing's happening. Yeah, it's worth just putting on the record. My understanding is that Convention says the government would have put down an amendment by 4.30 this afternoon, if which is plenty of time at one level, but um, yes. not much if you're starting from scratch. Uh, equally, we have until 4.30 tomorrow afternoon to lodge something in the committee's name, which, as I say, I'm very happy to do. Leslie? Yeah, I think it just, I would welcome you to communicate with the, with the government over this issue. I, um, if they are not willing to put forward their own amendment, I, I think I would, I would be comfortable with you lodging a, an amendment about the enhanced affirmative procedure um, in, in the name of the on the back of this committee. I right. think it's to do with the fact that there are very sh short time constraints yeah. and it's a sort of second best outcome. Right. Could, uh, uh, we, we seem all to be in the same place on this. I wonder whether I could... F I, I don't think I want to try and draft those words that will be for those around me on reflection to do so. Could I just read you a form of words which might you might agree is the principle on which we want to operate? Just clarify, so this is the principle rather than the actual... This is principle rather than the actual text, which will very definitely lead to those whose <clears throat> pens are skilled at this kind of thing. But in order to enable Parliament to properly scrutinise and influence the development of the proposals, the Committee would welcome an enhanced form of alternative alternative procedure which includes requirements for one consultation on draft regulations, two consultation responses to be had regard to and the draft regulations modified as appropriate, and three, publication of a summary of the consultation responses and any changes which have been made to the draft regulations, together with the reasons for making those changes prior to final draft regulations being laid before the Parliament. Does that feel like the, the yep. basis on which we could operate? Right, on, on that, if it sounds as though the committee is unanimous, that's what I should try and do. Um, clearly, we'll alert the government to the fact that we're going to do that as a matter of good grace, if nothing else, and I'll make sure that the committee has drafted and lodged something in our name uh, by 4.30 tomorrow, if nothing else appears to supersede that. Fine. Okay, members are comfortable with that? Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Does that take us everywhere we want to go? All oh, right. Does the committee also agree to report that it's content with the remaining new or substantially revised delegated powers after stage two? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Right, that takes us to agenda item three, which is Land Reform Scotland Bill. This item is for the committee to consider correspondence received from the Scottish Government on stage three amendments to part three of this bill. The Scottish Government has written to the committee describing its amendments to section 36 of the bill, changing one delegated power and creating one new delegated power. Is the committee content with the proposed delegated powers in section 36, please? Yes. Thank you. Members will also note that we have seen for the first time this morning an amendment number 140 in the name of Richard Lockhead, which modifies section 89A, relates to land valuations, and it does seem to be subject to the affirmative procedure as the committee had desired. Do members have any comments on that, or are we comfortable to uh, acknowledge that? Stuart. Um, I, I simply think it's appropriate to welcome uh, the, the publication of that amendment and the presiding officer's acceptance of that manuscript amendment. I think that's helpful and is the proper response to this committee's deliberations and inputs. So is the committee content with the proposed delegated power? Yes. yes. We are. Thank you very much. Okay, that completes agenda item three and I now move this meeting into private. <laughs>